And Sato's Place is brought to you by... We got CLA, nothing else to say. I'm a poet. Ha, <laughs> it's Pensado's place, let's go. Herbert, what's up? How are you, man? Oh man, did I tell you we, we were over at S, do the tech thing over there, see the other I get there early. I, I, the room is filled, mm -hmm. so I told I told the guys in the room I'll stay an extra thirty minutes if you guys boo heavily when 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 <laughs> when Eric Serafin comes in and 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 um, Ed when Ed Cherney comes in when they introduce those guys boo real loud but when they introduce me stand up and cheer oh. it was the funniest thing you oh ever saw. Oh my God! Eric, <laughs> Eric, they're looking at each other like, man, what's going on? And then everybody erupts for me and they kind of figured it out. So well, I had a good time. I, I see. Uh, well, we did have a good time. It was nice to stop yeah, by and, and thanks to them. Hey everybody, how you doing? Um, we're coming to you live from the Art Institute of California, Los Angeles as usual. Happy for you to be here, special show. Um, you know the homework drill, do all that stuff. Get to Facebook, get to Twitter, get to our YouTube channel, communicate with us, we'll get back to you as we usually do. We wanna say hello to our Vintage King guys. Hey Vintage King. What's up guys? Prom Wave, we love those guys. In the chat room is our buddy Jeff Leibovich. Jeff, there's his name up on the screen and all his information. Do you have a, stump, a Jeff question? I do. What is it? Uh, Jeff, I, I, I don't think I can hear the difference between Mullard tubes and regular tubes for the price. So should I just buy some Russian shit tubes or go with the Mullards? Tell me, my friend. There you go, Jeff. You're on your pressure now. We're going to be monitoring that. Um, always a hello to our avid folks. Um, they're doing a great this, a great giveaway this week. So, mm -hmm. guys, here's your opportunity to win an Mbox Pro. We're going to give that away in about three to four weeks. Make sure you get your information in, pensadosplace.tv forward slash avid, pensadosplace.tv forward slash avid. Um, we want to we want to give that to you, and Avid wants to give that to you. We give a lot of stuff away. Yeah, we do. We call it the toy box section. This is where our, like, our audience like can that. get in the toy box and get some stuff. So do that. Big thanks to uh, to our Avid friends there. Um, also, good good stuff. Um, this isotope relationship, some folks that you you really well, like their stuff. Obviously, I, I use it. I use that's how we met them. Was I was using it and loved it. and yep. talked to them about. Uh, Getting some free stuff, <laughs> like this. and of course, that's in your normal, in your normal uh, Donald Trump way. You turn that into a little sponsorship thing and giving some stuff away to our guests, or uh, not our guests. Well, in in this particular case, one of the cool things about this company is the quality level of what mm -hmm. they do is exactly what mm -hmm. we want to try to make sure that we stand by and stand for. Um, we have a winner from last week of the Alloy Two stuff. It's Aaron Hodgson. Let's give oh, a round of applause. Congratulations, Aaron. Aaron. Congratulations, Aaron. We'll be getting that out to you. you go, he, he's going to love this. Yeah, it's good stuff. I mean, Isotope has a bunch of good stuff. Like, for instance, well, Nectar. We were talking about that earlier. You like these <laughs> There's a preset on Nectar. <laughs> <laughs> I use it all the time. It's, it, I, it, it's got Barry White's name in it somehow, some way, but <laughs> it just gives you an octave lower, and like, <laughs> like you get a little squeaky girl voice or something. Uh -huh. You just kind of mix that octave lower underneath. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes what I'll do is I'll just, I'll just use that uh, octave lower, and I won't, you won't hear it, but I'll just send it to a reverb or send it to a delay, so my reverb's coming back a, an octave lower just to fatten up the little squeaky chick voice. Sure. It's good. And, oh, and there's, a, there's another preset on there. I can't remember the name of it either, but like people ask us all the time, like, can you make it sound like more voices? And it really does. It, yep. it saves you from having to do all that. So the Barry stuff. White preset and the more voices preset. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember the name of either one. <laughs> but, but they were there. It's very usable. No, and I, I've, I've heard you talk about it even yeah. when we're not on air. It's good stuff. So, good stuff. again, we're giving more stuff away. Enter Alloy 2 giveaway. Pensadosplace.tv forward slash isotope is where you go, like you usually do. Get there, get this stuff. Good stuff. Thank you, Alloy. We love you guys. Uh, and last but not least, our friends from France, from the South, from Provence. Yeah, you've done, you've done a, a mix with, with the Masters. Masters. Came back from doing it. We, um, Victor and those guys. Really cool stuff. Really good campaign. As you know, they're going to waive the fee for you to go. All you have to be responsible for is travel. They're going to pick everything up. We're happy to give that to you. We're happy that they would partner with us. Big shout outs to Victor and those guys. Do I qualify for Huge. that? Huge. And you hear, pardon? Can I go free? Can no, if you ever looked at contests when you're growing up, friends and family members, sorry, bro. Now, we're going to take you to Pacoima, though. 
and have a special special thing there. Um, look, they do great stuff. They've had guest speakers like our esteemed guest, CLA certainly has been part of it. Tony Maserati, Chad Blake, Manny American. Andy Wallace. Uh, Andy Wallace, a bunch of good stuff. And in their upcoming lineup Brower, in September. Buddy Brower. Exactly. They, in September, they're having Michael Brower and Joe Ciccarelli. Good job. Um, in October, obviously, for this one, we got Eddie Kramer. It's a great thing you want to go to. In November, Andrew yeah. Sheps, Schweps, who's been on the, our Sheps. show, Sheps. Um, it's just good stuff. You get to the south of France, you meet your heroes, you learn, you spend time, and you grow, and it's a great thing. Victor, thanks so much for offering that to our audience. So where do you go for that? Cheese, pensadosplace.tv forward slash MWTM, which would be mixed with the masters. That's the toy box. Lots of stuff to give to you. We're out of that. Now let's get to our esteemed guest. What do you think? <laughs> I mean, just run that other tape I screwed up with. Uh, it was as good as it's going to get. I can't go anything but downhill from here. It's so hard. Man, you know what? We've been talking about uh, having Chris on since the, the very first day you yeah. came up with a concept for the show. Chris has been someone that I've admired and respected for so, so long. And I tend to re admire and respect the cats that I can't emulate. I can't do what they do, which is 99% of the entire music world. <laughs> I, I can't even beat rough mixes on a bad day. But Chris, thank you so much for coming by, man. I got Hey, you're welcome. Man. You're That's welcome. Thanks pleasure. for having me. <laughs> oh, not this again. Oh, pleasure. I, I did better that time. I made it to bus 24. Come on. Uh, I've been wanting to talk to you for so long. We keep we see each other all the time at various functions and stuff. Sure. And, uh, Man, I mean, remember that time? I'm, I'm, I'm gonna digress one quick time before Herb hits me because he always does. But when Ron had that dinner for us all in San Francisco, that was yeah. just a special night, wasn't it? That was around AES, wasn't it? It was, was fantastic. AES. That's usually when we all see each other. <laughs> Is that uh, you know a conference and we're all you know happy because we're all drinking. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wanted to start off like a little slow. What, what's in, in your opinion? What do you think the biggest misconception? about you is out there in the blogosphere because I know you and I know how you work and almost all of it's incorrect in one form or another that people say you did or equipment you use or a technique you use. So It's kind of got the Wizard of Oz effect where behind yeah. the curtain is a little different than what's out in front. And yeah. Just because you see all those meters doesn't mean everything's going to them. <laughs> uh, you know, it's funny, I have to do the I have to convince people that I don't compress every possible part of the audio, okay? Yeah. I try to, you, you, but you, sometimes you, you, I don't. You use very little compression on drums, and people think your drums are squashed to hell and back. And sometimes you don't even compress at all, I hear. It's yeah, like, I mean, it all depends. You know, it's like, I don't really have... A rule? I'm not really trying to, like, get the most amount of compression in one song anymore. <laughs> I've already done that. Anymore? Well, no, I've, I've, I've already, you know, I've already, I've already said, know. okay, I have 475 dB of compression going on in this one song, okay? <laughs> exactly. I just don't have to do that anymore. I'm just trying to make the song sound good because you guys are already compressing it to hell anyway. Uh, mm -hmm. The compression bucket list is filled. Yeah, just because I have, like, you know, 80 of them behind me, just because I want to have, you know, the Baskin Robbins effect. Yeah. I never know when I need raspberry versus orange walnut or, you know, chocolate ice cream or whatever, but... Uh, and believe me, I have no fear of mangling stuff if it needs it. Uh, <laughs> so the world can rest easy tonight. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there, there was one time, I don't know, I had to compress stuff just to hear it over the fans because the air conditioning was broken. So, I mean, and uh, I still like that mix. It was like, it became one of the funniest jokes ever uh, when Byron came in. And it was like 105 degrees and I had no shirt on, I was in shorts. But we oh, had to get the record done. And, I hate those days. And he's like... Man, those fans are loud. I'm like, but I can hear the guitars now. I goes, yeah, I can see because every meter's pegging behind you. So, uh, no, that's the misconception. You know what? That brings up a point. One of the things I learned from you, not directly, but from from an interview a long time ago, I was I was like a mains guy. I put my I put my mixes on the mains. I'd monitor it. I mean, you could arc well with the with the with the electricity that was going through those monitors. They were so loud, and my mixes weren't pleasing to me. And then I read that you monitored at a, at a level where you can discern everything in the mix. Man, when I started doing that, everything changed for me. I learned how to use NS10s correctly. I, I, you know, that made a big difference. So I'll pay you the commission later. Oh. I know, I know that was the contract I signed. But it's kind of like it's kind of like when your dentist tells you to floss your teeth, brush every night. Monitoring at low level is kind of the same thing. You don't really want to do it. You want to crank it, but you're just fooling yourself. So. 
I tend to listen to levels so low that my assistant's texting on the computer is like, hey, shut up, you're no typing joke. too loud. Uh. Or, you know, little noises like that start to irritate me. And I go, don't you guys notice I'm writing a vocal and you're making all this noise? <laughs> uh, you know, I just try to st find one volume, stick with it, and hold there as long as you possibly can. Mm. You know, and, cool. and, that, and that works. You know, then you can do it all day long. Mm -hmm. I mean, you crank it back and forth. But yeah, I know what you're saying about the mains. Like, once you start going large and staying large, I don't know, really, it's all bad after that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then you're like, now I can't tell anything. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it forces you to do the wrong things. You're, you're focusing on things that don't count because not too many people have those at home. Right, well, no, you're not really mixing then. You're just, you're just getting your jollies. You're just crank, you know, and I'll crank it in the car just for fun, you know. It's, I can't, you can't figure anything out. You can say, hey, listen to my drums, you know. Mm -hmm. Another it's another that. thing that I'd like to straighten out now. In fact, in fact, this whole this, is a this whole out session. this whole this whole show is going to be CLA straightening out clean. misconceptions <laughs> about the ceiling. Um, one of the things I like when I hear your mixes is, is is they're they're very dynamic. Like 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 a lot of people think you use you use compression so that you don't have to move faders, but you move faders a lot. And and I like the way you you. You sent, you, you, it sounds like you, you get a vocal, you get a drum sound, and then you then you wrap that with everything else with faders, not with compressors. Can you kind of describe that process? Because I think I think we all need to learn that, including me. I mean, uh, I mean, the, the whole thing is, yeah, right. You're saying they're dynamic, they're, they, but they don't sound like they have all this compression. I mean, the thing is, is I just I treat it like an Italian race car driver. It's like once I get in the left lane, I can't go back the way I came. <laughs> I can't look in the mirror. I can't go back and say, okay, I'm going to just keep it nice and safe. It's like, you know what? I'm in to win. So I try to do it all in one pass, which is really dangerous because you can make, you can, you can make mistakes. Sure. But you, what mm -hmm. you're doing is you're, you are so confident about it that you get a bounce say, okay, I, this song is not going to mix itself. They never do. Mm -hmm. So I have to make my moves, and the quicker I make my moves, the quicker it's going to come together. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of more old school. It's more, um, you know, when I was at the mixing with the masters, and I was on a Neve, which I have no idea how to drive. Mm -hmm. You know, it might as well the steering wheel on the back, for all I know. <laughs> but I got 15 guys going, hey, you know, we're going to learn everything from this guy. Mm -hmm. So I had to be in an uncomfortable situation on unfriendly equipment, but I still had to just get a bounce, mix, and do it. I didn't even, couldn't even figure the automation out. So I'm mixing their songs in one pass straight to two track with no automation. Mm. So that's what I try to do every day. And if you got to EQ something, well, EQ it in between beats, you know, or something. But uh, that's what it is. It's, there's no, you know, it's, that's the excitement. So really, it's, it's the, don't let the talk technology lead the charge. The, 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 the trust yourself and, man, Preach that to me, because I, I I don't trust myself hardly ever at all. I, I I end up just taking weeks to do something. How do you how do you get that mentality? I mean, I, uh, you know, I've been working about the same length of time, so I should be pretty good too. But for some reason, I don't have that. How do I get that? I mean, I don't know. I think it's 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 you know, faith in yourself, and faith in what you do, and knowing that. You may, you, you have this much time allotted to do what you're supposed to do in a song. I never get this much time. I tend to get this much time. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you don't have a choice. Mm -hmm. It's like the band's showing up in 45 minutes. You told them to come at two. You didn't tell them you're going to be on the phone till one. <laughs> you know what I mean? You, you didn't have, you know, sometimes it's like it's not convenient. It's uncomfortable. It's like, holy crap. When there's no time, the stuff I do when I have no time is way more exciting than when I have... Mm -hmm days to, to, to destroy it. Do you print as you go along to kind of go back and reference or you just nope. wait till you're done? No, nope. it, to me it's, it's a very simple process. When it's done, it's done. Then we print. I never, I never backpedal at all. Mm -hmm. you know, I never look behind me unless I see red lights. <laughs> right. <laughs> and that's usually my assistant saying, a piece of gear is on fire. <laughs> yep, can't and, use that anymore. <laughs> and, and another thing I wanted to clear up while we're clearing stuff up, um, a lot of people think that, that, that you have stuff set up, your process, we won't go into that because it's, yeah. so, it's so already beat to death on the internet. Uh, nobody knows my process. Yeah. But, um, what is your process? <laughs> I don't have one. But um, a lot of people think that, 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 that the process is, is, is for the process for, or speed, but it's actually to remove the technical part of the, of the process so that you don't have to think about shifting gears in your, in your Ferrari or your, whatever the car was that you're driving. Exactly. It's, it, it's, not, it's not to save time. It's not to, 
to be lazy and not have to make a, a setting move is so that you don't have to think about anything but the, the, the material and, and, and be creative. And exactly. I, I think that's genius. If you peel away all the issues involved with making music work, like setup and organizing and figuring out where it is, if you just get to the point where it's here, go. Mm -hmm. And then even though your gear is set up for something completely opposite, that's not really the issue. The issue is the song's here, everything's worked out, your first impression is everything, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Your first impression is everything. When you go meet someone, you go make an acquaintance, you go on a date or whatever, you, your, your first opinion, your, that's everything. Your first impression. I so agree with that. If you're sitting over your assistant's you know, shoulder, so what are those backgrounds? What are these parts? You're comping, you know, what's all the stuff I gotta deal with? I don't wanna know about it. I wanna hear it when I'm doing it. I don't wanna prep it, then I know too much. I don't want all that information. I was talking to Tom uh, Elmhurst the other day and he likes to really consolidate to a few tracks. You like to consolidate to around 44 tracks. And that's a big, that's a big help too big in fun. not having to worry about processes and things. It, it, you can be more creative. I'm gonna, start, I'm gonna start doing that. I started doing that. I like well, that I, idea. Well, I, I mean, look, I think that, um, get it, pick a number. If you have a 17 input desk, if you have 60 input chicken bananas, it doesn't have 60 outputs of the Pro Tools, whatever. There's no rule. Mm -hmm. I've just happened to pick 44 just because my rig I picked 44, sometimes it's 46, as at least the place, you know, mm -hmm. where it'll work. And it never doesn't work. And I'm never making a compromising comp that's like, this is ridiculous. Why am I doing this, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, we're getting like 200 tracks now. Yeah, they're all 200 trackers. They're all overindulgences and spreading it out. Fine, you know, spread it all out. That's what you have it for. You know, it's like having a giant shoe closet. You can see everything, whatever. But, I, you know, I want to get it where it makes sense. Because shoe at the end well, hold on, hold on. A giant shoe closet? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know. That's quote of the week. Uh, I, I personally think, you know, that's all part of the delivery. You know, it's all coming with the tools that make sense. So. Mm -hmm. At what point in the process do you add um, the, uh, the red compressor to the stereo bus? Do you, do you mix into it or do you put it on at a certain stage or it varies? I, it's, it's in there. I drive with, you, you, you gotta remember that, that that whatever your car is, you think of that, that's that's your car. Mm -hmm. Like the compressor, that that's your rev limiter. That's where you can put it to the floor, you can push up against it. That's where there's a bit of give mm -hmm. and take in the whole thing. Yeah. So to me, that's your sound initially. Um, I, I use that as the buffer, that's the thing. So that's part of your sound. So no, if you put it in later then then your balance changes. Then you're like you're rethinking it. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to set up the stage first, set up the rig first, and then you know whatever's going in it. Now sometimes I pop it out. Sometimes I'll pop it out and say, "This thing is already mangled. What's going on here? It's not working." Mm -hmm. So I'm not afraid to reach over it. And my assistant's like, "Don't change that ever." <laughs> I'm like, "What? Why? You'll write it down." You remember? Uh, I don't know if you remember at AES a couple of years, three, four years back. I was like, "What? What? What are you using on a stereo bus?" And you told me, and I went home and tried it. I couldn't make it work. I, I, I'm still struggling with how to work the stereo bus with a compressor. Well, I don't hit it very hard, so it's just, you know, oh. it's just to keep my speakers from blowing up. Really, but the funny thing is, that's where it started. Was I've never, like, I never blow speakers. My NS10s are, I mean, you know, they're on Geritol at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they have a handicap park sticker on the cover, you know what I'm saying? They have AARP cards. Exactly. I mean, those guys are getting better benefits than me. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I hear these stories about, oh, the guy did like eight tweeters last night or two. What, really? So by having the compressor on, when you when you push some track up and this big thing comes out, at least it doesn't pop the speaker. Mm. So I mean, that's what the great thing about the bus limiter was. So. Mm. Let me ask a couple of specific questions real quick. Um, I love the way you, you, nine times out of ten, and if you disagree, tell me. Nine times out of ten, the vocal is, is is the most important thing in the track. Totally. And the way you handle vocals is very unique. What I've learned from you is. I was, tr I was working in solo and I'd get this really round Pavarotti thing going on on the bottom end and then I'd put it in the mix and it's, it's just god awful. Right. But you, you, yes. what you're so brilliant at, and this is the last compliment you get today, I, I promise, <laughs> is I, I, the, way I, the way I hear your vocals is, is if it's needed and useful, it's there. If it's not, it ain't there. You, you, you give me exactly what I want to hear and so consequently your vocals just 
uh, all the nuances are there. I can hear all the subtleties of the singer. I mean, you're a singer's mixer because everything about the, this right about that vocal that gets the energy and conveys the melody and conveys the emotion of the song, I don't have to hunt for it in a CLA mix. It's just right there and beautifully delivered. And I love the way you do that. It's a tricky... That wasn't I mean, a question. <laughs> no, I understand, yeah. But the, well, thanks for, <laughs> thanks for that. But I mean, yeah, the, 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 thanks for that. And part of the secret is to do what you did, to not do what you did. No one ever hears anything in solo. Right. Period. Right. I learned that. So the only way to get a vocal sound is when it's competing with everything. That's mm -hmm. my, you know, that, put it up against everything. Make it be that little mm -hmm. fin that sticks out of the ocean that's trying to battle the whole thing. That's the only way you get it to work. So, 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 so your thought process when you sit down, by that time you already have in your head what you want it to sound like and you just, you, you just grab for something and... I just, it's got to compete. It's got to compete with the barrage of music underneath it. Now, in the verse, it could be acoustic guitar and vocal, but in the chorus, it could be, you know, the whole kitchen sink. So you got you to gotta make it work with everything. So mm -hmm. I, I want to make it sound good when it's competing. And sometimes I solo and I'm like, hey, it's distorting or something's wrong or, or it's super bright or something, mm -hmm. but no one's ever going to solo it. Do, when, during the process, at, at some point, are you wor working mostly with just vocals and drums, and then and then when, when those sound compatible, then you bring in the guitars? Is that the process sometimes? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I just try to make it all compatible at the same time because it doesn't work isolated. But kind of the groove and the vocals a little bit just to find the song, mm -hmm. and then just figure out who's getting in the way. Uh, okay. You know, that's a lot of it. A lot of it is that. You know. I, I understand how you're working the vocals within the framework. Of, 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 of vocal and groove, uh, how do you approach the groove at that point in time? Are, are, you, are, are, you, are you trying to match the, uh, like, like, like if the drums are very ambient and the vocal isn't, do you try and reduce some of the ambience of the drums? Or how do you? How do you I if, mean, uh, I, I kind of just let the, the spirit of the record, the spirit of the song just mm -hmm. dictate how wet it should get. Like, I don't even think about it. You don't put any effects on the drums though, do you? Uh, it depends, yeah, I do. It depends on the song. I got uh, plenty of reverb. Okay. I got a big tank. I got one of those big tanks outside. I just pull the reverb button and all it comes down in you know, a flow. Like yeah, rivers you, of reverb. I mean, are you comfortable telling me what reverb you like is your go-to on drums? I mean, yeah, they're all from the 80s. They're all made out of unobtainium. <laughs> <laughs> Everything I have is, there's a spare in the back mm -hmm. in case someone like, Hey, what's that do? Boom! You know. Yeah. No, EMT 250, a 246, a 252, uh -huh. DRE 2000, Sony, you know, AMS, Reverb, remember those things? Oh, I love them. How about Yamaha yeah. Rev 1? Just the remote itself yeah. is worth all. I still use a Rev 5. I like that. I got a Rev 5. And yeah, a 7, too. An original 224, you know. Wow. The Bricasti is the only new Reverb I use, really. Yeah, it's like I love the only Bricasti. New one. I like piling up all the old guys. Yeah. You know, they have a thing, you know. Even the Ursa Space Station, you know. But I have to have, like, pairs of them. I mean, like, so do they got, like, three or four of them. But, I mean, you know, um, that old stuff, it's like it's heartbreaking when, when it when just fails. And I can't keep a 2016 going to save my life. I got wow. three bad ones right now, none more. Yeah, I mean, that's where Vintage King, you know, and City Electronics, David Kulka are the only guys that save us. I mean, if I ever have a problem, I call Mike Nera. Mm -hmm. No, that's mm -hmm. like 911. Exactly. <laughs> Period. Speed dial. Right, 911, it's like three phone calls. Nine, uh, Day, uh, Mike Nair for gear, David Kulka for, I got to repair something that you probably have a schematic for, mm -hmm. and then Bruce Miller for the console. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, mm -hmm. Bam, Which Bruce. is basically on my short list to get there. So. Yeah. Um, when, you're, when you're EQing guitars, uh, you play guitar, what are you listening for in terms of, of, of what to remove? Like at that point in time, the drums are banging. Vocals are where you want them, and and I know you can't say specifically, uh, but uh, uh, normally, what do you remove from a guitar to make it work at that point in time, what frequency-wise? I'm not a remover; I'm an adder. I'm usually just adding. So, uh -huh. um, if I'm removing, I'm just filtering off some low end. But generally, it's like, it, where's this going to fit? It's got to be bright enough. You know, where can I park this in the scheme mm -hmm. where it's taken up a different place? You know. It's like putting furniture in an apartment. Which part of the apartment is this going to go in? <laughs> where does it look right? Yeah, where does this look right? Yep. Hanging over the TV? Yeah, exactly. Like, oh. when, when, when would you ever use a, a ratio above an 8 to 1 approaching limiting? Do you ever think that way, or do you just... No, I just close my eyes and say, what happens with these guys? Uh, um, 
Uh, I don't know. My ratio tends to hang at four to one. I just rather double compress it sometimes. Oh, so rather than an eight to one, you would just run it. Straight. Yeah, you might pre-limit it and then just use the compressor. I, I just think that the, that all that stuff has a certain flavor that works really well. And sometimes high ratios on all the vintage gear uh -huh. has more artifacts than the, the perfect ratio. Mm -hmm. You know, so you might as well just add a companion. You know. Mm. I don't, I don't like, think the gear likes to be lonely, so it wants a friend to help. <laughs> Sometimes a plug-in, you know. And, and do you ever go below below 4 to 1? And, and, and yeah, when or I mean, why? Bus is all 1.5 to 1. I mean, like on individual tracks. Uh, yeah, it's, like, if I'm going to compress kick and snare, it's never 4 to 1. It's like 2 to 1 or less. Mm -hmm. um, and and, and, and why, why, why do you make that decision? Of, because of, I'll hear the snare going away. Uh, mm. You know, yes. I'd rather I let the symbol, bus compressor grow. Symbols go away when I compress them too much. But. Well, the problem with symbols is that they're everywhere. So the more you, <coughs> the more you mangle, the, you know, the more you start compressing the drums, the overheads, you get, you get no crashes. You just get, you just get an ocean of crap. Yeah, because they're in every mic. Well, because they're not even poking out over the top. So mm. you got to look at it as the symbol is this is this really poorly designed thing, that as soon as you start killing a transient on it, you don't even hear the crash. You know what I'm saying? Mm. All you hear is the, the the bad part of it. All you hear is the sustain. <laughs> the Paramore record, a uh, couple of years ago, the drums on that record are probably some of my favorite you've ever done. I wish I could remember the name of it. If you said it, I'd remember the name of it. But was there anything unique about those drums that, that, that was your contribution that made them so much? I mean, they're just, I mean, of course, that's one of my favorite groups ever. And, and by the way, kudos to you. You you brought the energy and excitement out of her like no one could ever do. Well, part of it was I was left to my own devices. Mm. And it's a Rob Cavallo production, so his mm -hmm. team does really well mm. with the recording. Um, mm -hmm. And so it comes in good. And I know that they're uh, the, the drummer, you know, I know that it's a band that's got to be punchy and aggro and punk. And then they're what all. What does aggro mean? Like, like aggro, like it's just hardcore. Yeah. I don't know what the word aggro, like um, aggressive. Ag aggressive. Oh, aggressive. Aggro. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, plus, when they're all, they're all apprehensive because they were with Ben Death, right, in the previous record, mm -hmm. uh -huh. and like his drums are pretty good. So it was, you know, I had to come to the plate, and knock him out of the park. Mm -hmm. So, so by the drummer hitting really hard and the drums being, you know, recorded pretty well. So um, on those, it, did you use compression? I probably did. I mean, I you know I don't remember specifics. I remember there's all standing behind me waiting for it to suck, <laughs> <laughs> and it didn't. Well, I'm gonna stop you right there because uh, one thing I love about you, Chris, is you're not shy that you're competitive. You wanna yeah, you wanna kick some ass. You wanna I mean not hurt anybody or take anybody's money, but you 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 wanna. You want to. You want to be. You want to win. Yeah. And, and Give us all the same car and see who's got who wants it most. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, the thing is, is if you don't want it, if you if you don't want it really that much, then why are you doing it? Maybe mm -hmm. it's just my attitudes differently. You know. Well, I was going to ask because actually, when you know, in researching and knowing about you, because I think I sometimes will will just willpower is an X factor that people forget. You know, if you want something worse than the other guy. You'll figure out how to get there. If you don't have that, you're going to get your ass kicked. It the guys happen. that don't it's have that. It's just that simple, isn't it? Yeah. Exactly. I think so. Yeah. The, the guys that don't have that go home at five in the afternoon. Yeah. Or, or they don't <laughs> get the job, or they that, don't well, get the mix, or they. Okay, it's because you're rich and famous, and you can <laughs> go home whenever you want. But no, I, I just find that either either you dedicate your life to doing what we do, or you don't. Or get out of it. <laughs> now you can get a, you can do it comfortably. Mm -hmm. But okay, if you do it on your a comfort level, that's nice and cushion easy, then don't complain. Yeah. But for me, it's like, you know what, I, I put everything on the line to do it, mm -hmm. and I try to balance family with music, with time, but it doesn't work out always perfect. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I still have a fire in my belly, and I have since I was little, and I, it actually gets worse, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's gotten worse. You started, worse. you were 12 years old or 13, right, when you first yeah. started working in a studio. Sure. Hmm. That's, so that's there's still the excitement and being able to trade war stories with people you've worked with for 20 or 30 years at this point, it's kind of fun. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I was actually doing, you know, I was trading those last night with Roger Davies. It was amazing. Oh, like, my gosh. Oh, yeah. We did, you know, 80-something were doing this and that. By know? the way, Eddie Van Halen did not write that song. It was Roger Davies and the Kings, right? <laughs> Just in case you forgot. Um, 
No, I meant Roger Davies, the manager, not. Uh, oh, not, I thought you meant. No, I thought Roger you meant. You're uh, thinking of another Davies, Ray Davies. Right. Ray Davies. Roger's from uh, Australia. Roger, right, Roger yeah, manages Roger's Roger pink. Yeah, in fact, exactly. Yeah, in fact, when I did uh, my pink run. Yeah. yeah, you know Roger. Okay. Yeah, I know him. I, okay. I don't know why. Uh, you know, the memory I goes. Me I got medical excuses. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Man, I've, I've ridden forward. that horse about as far as it's going to go. It's, it's broken well, we're down. glad you're here. <laughs> that, that nag is three-legged at this point. <laughs> uh, I was thinking last night when I, was, when I was thinking about how not to embarrass myself in front of you. I, I was like. Impossible. Oh, it's already happened, so that, 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 that ship sailed. But um, what I thought was so cool was how blatantly you give respect to Bob Clear Mountain and how um, how you openly talk about the importance of him in your life and and it's, it's a beautiful story. In fact, this would be a good time to to mention um, Erica Glenn, the the Sonic Scoop video she did on you when you're when you're talking in those videos about Bob Clear Mountain. There's something special going on between you, you know, and I I I, I really like that. If there was a kid nowadays who's who walked up to you who's a, a little young 12 year old. Chris Lord Algae in, in your Clear Mountain, what would you tell that kid right now that would help them in the same way that Clear Mountain helped you? Damn, that's a good question. That's a really good question. Uh, yeah, I mean, I would absolutely tell him to follow his dreams and don't let anything get in the way of it. Mm -hmm. And if you want to, if you want me, if you want to be like me and you want to do it, then push me out of the way. Mm -hmm. Beat me, come after absolutely. me, go after me. I mean, my whole thing was back wow. in the day, I want to clear the mountain. <laughs> because, you know, and it wasn't being disrespectful. No, because you love and, that guy. And he's the, but he's the most respected guy that, the, you know, the reason why I mix is because I, I wanted to make records that sounded as good as Bob. Mm -hmm. And being his friend and hanging out with, I mean, you know, we don't hang out all the time, but we have spent some time together. And I like people to know that, that without all the stuff that Bob did, none of us would be doing what we're doing. Very true, very true. So it was great when Erica offered to interview me with Sonic Scoop and I was in New York mm -hmm. and you know the idea for Power Station, mm -hmm. that you wanted to sit there and do the whole thing and then do the questions about Bob and then I ended up calling him. <laughs> I mean, it was really important that I was putting this like, this did is Bob. Did he know you were gonna call him? I kind of warned him, yeah. Oh, okay, good. I, I warned him. I mean, I warned him I might be calling and says, you'd be okay with that? And uh, you know, I wasn't gonna call him cold, so. Yeah. Um, but to be able to go to the place that he kind of helped, you know, craft, which was Power Station, mm -hmm. and have the whole discussion, and do the interview at his desk, mm -hmm. like, it was huge for me. It put me in a place that was so important. So I look at it as, as like one of my best interviews because of where it was. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Erica was really great at interviewing me because, mm -hmm. you know, She's an artist, it, she's an engineer. It, it, touched me. it touched me seeing seeing and hearing you talk to him. Because I, I saw you guys yeah. interact in San Francisco at dinner one time. And, and I, I, I wished I'd had that, you know, I felt jealous. And then to see it materialize. I was so it. glad that I actually earned to, to right to get to that mm -hmm. point. See, I never felt that I've ever earned, like, the respect to be even in the same league as Bob. Mm -hmm. But lately people say, no, no, you're pretty good, you're okay, you know. And then when he actually said to me that you're doing pretty good and I'm proud of what you do, what like you to do. me, that to have him say it to me was more important. Sure. But I think he was really excited that I wanted to, to get on video saying, look, this is Bob's freaking studio. See this tape, you know, see this wall, see these mic inputs? Bob wired this, okay? The speaker's coming to you. Good Times by Chic, he mixed, tracked, and did it all in here without anybody's, you know, input. Mm. Like he did it, the band came in and said, wow, that sounds great. This is all his thing. The freak, the chic stuff, you know, and the, 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 the Bruce Springsteen and the Brian Adams, like that's some serious yeah, stuff. Brian Adams record, a special record. You know, and the Stones, I mean, start me up, come on. Yeah. I don't got no start me up in my list, okay? <laughs> you know, no. I may have a couple of good numbers, but. No, but, you, you know, you, you, you're being modest. You know. so, 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 so did he, did he ever say, don't use bus compression, use two to one. Did he ever get specific or was it all just more? No, you know, it's all, it's nothing specific ever. He'll, he'll show me some tricks on the console, but they're not about use of compression or EQ. It's about routing and about what he does with delays. Stuff that's even over my head a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, over and your his, head? Yeah, and his designs of the SSL, his modifications. But I let my ears, when I hear his stuff, figure it out. Mm. And I, you know, I, I realize it has nothing to do with what he's doing here. He's hearing it a certain way. And that's, that's the thing I took away from it the most. Both of you did a, a mix of Born in the USA. Well, Dancing in the Dark. 
Dancing mm -hmm. in the Dark. Mm -hmm. How does yours compare to his? I don't know. Mine sounds very amateuristic compared to his. But the thing that you'd know, the thing is more so recently is, that's 84. I mean, that was a bit, you know, I was just a cocky guy doing a 12 inch. You know, I wasn't, mm -hmm. you know, going for beating Bob's single mix. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Right. I was just lucky to be in the room with Bruce. So, um, the thing was recently that was the big deal was we both mixed the Springsteen record. Oh, that's right. I forgot. See, he mixed the Springsteen record, and then Ron Ionello sent me, you know, the, the, I just kept mixing it until it was like time to pick, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, I think Rich Costi got a couple, you know, there was a couple other guys. Spike got one, or Costi got one. So then it was just up to Bruce picking which ones he liked to make the record. Mm. So I was happy that I actually have a mixing credit where a record I, you know, a record I did, I'm sharing with Bob. And to me, that's my biggest achievement, mm -hmm. is that not only is it Bob's artist, like I'm encroaching in his backyard. Mm -hmm. I'm like waving at him, hey buddy, I'm did cutting you your grass to, now. Did you get to hear Hi. his mix? Did you hear his mix? Yeah, I heard all his mixes. Uh, I'm uh, like, I gotta do better than that. How, how did they compare to yours? What was, what was unique about yours? Be, be, don't be humble. I don't know. You like. I was trying to at least cop his and make it better mm -hmm. so I could, at least I could be in the ballpark. Mm -hmm. And I, I could not figure out what he was doing. Like, oh, I got this. This is easy. Mm -hmm. uh, he was getting stuff with the vocals I couldn't get, you know. I mean, my thing was different. Maybe my thing was like just – I couldn't explain it. I couldn't say, oh, I got this, you know. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. but um, I got to hear him like, shit, this is a huge uphill battle. Yeah. I mean, I'm actually trying to do this. So, yeah. But to be able to be on the same record with Bob, I mean, Major. if – you know, if uh, that big earthquake gets on the way home, I'm good. Well, the, the thing that I find fascinating with Craftsman is if you're competitive, you're also curious. You stay curious. You still want to learn. You, you, you have to find things that inspire you to keep that fire in the belly, right? And don't, don't those dynamics, they, they interplay. Do you find that in your work that you're, you're constantly striving to get there, wherever there is? The, I, th I think the inspiration partially comes from the fact that that I just want to kick ass every day. Exactly. I want people to go, Jesus, that's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I don't want saying, oh, that's okay. We got some changes. Right. No, you don't. I want to eliminate changes. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to roll over that. I always I say, um, I always say, never, never judge a mixer by his best mix. Judge him by his worst mix. And your your worst your worst mix, my friend, is incredible. Well, thanks. <laughs> You've got a consistency that that defies description. I mean. Uh, I'm like, I'm I, I've get, I definitely have given up a lot for it, but I mm -hmm. definitely have pretty much make that such a focus. And yeah, I mean, it's you know, it's it's not made the best family man out of me, and it's not made me be the you know the perfect nine to five guy. But you know what? Yeah. I guess I just wasn't built that way. Occupational right. hazard, really. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> exactly. Uh, another Dark. couple of records, of yours. I just <clears throat> can't stop playing is. Uh, the Rob Cavallo, you know what? Let me, let me, I'll, I'm gonna do it this way. I love the combination of you and Rob Cavallo, and I love the combination of you and Howard Benson. That, those two combinations have produced my favorite records. And, and uh, the Cavallo stuff with Green Day, um, that had to be, it had to come with some built-in built difficulties because Green Day has a reputation of being a certain way. Did you have the freedom to, to, to be, to be CLA or did was were those kind of well see I will I'll, 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 I'll tell way. you that there are two different animals they're, they're what you're talking about is Rob and Howard uh -huh. and Green Day and all you know I've done so many records with Howard right? yeah like ten t times more than Rob right uh -huh. Green Day only sound has to only sound one way the problem is is finding where their sound is mm -hmm. it's it's there it but doesn't, it's the not given to you you create it no no it's there you can't you can't influence it. You have to make it Green Day, but make it Green Day on steroids. Mm -hmm. And it, that's the thing. It's like your influence is more in balance and tone, okay? And that's what makes it difficult. You you have to keep it within this perimeter because that's what creates a sound like Led Zeppelin. You know what I mean? They're that important where it's Led Zeppelin. Mm -hmm. You know? And there's other bands that it can come in. Um, so just to, to compare, Rob Cavallo, Green Day, Howard Benson, Hailstorm, or yeah. you know all the other records we've done, it comes in, and I'll tend to push it past the limit and supercharge it mm. to see how far we can overdo it. And a lot of times, that's what makes it work. Like Chris Daughtry, for example, he's an artist that sings so good that you have to actually push it hard to make it explode a bit. Mm. And Theory push of the it, Dead push Man... It, push it volume or compression? Push it Push it, drive it like a martial amp. Just push it. Don't be so polite with it. Mm. And I find with 
Howard's always looking to me to be really improper, to have my way with it, and to make it do what it wouldn't normally do. Because mm -hmm. we're trying to make these records appeal to different audiences. Mm -hmm. Where Green Day has a certain sound that it's really tricky, but once you get those three guys in the front line, it makes sense. And that's what I think keeps the consistency of Green Day's record sounding a certain way as an artist. And each one is another step up. And the new one, of course, which was a few songs that we just finished, mm -hmm. um, is a continuation of like that thing. Mm -hmm. when, 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 when you're in the process, when you start the process, do you actually think about who's going to buy the record? Do you actually think about their audience? No, I think about me liking it. Okay. I never think about who's buying it. I always think about, I have to like it. I only think about who's going to buy it when it's, uh, it's a specific type of music where it's really leading pop or the song could go more pop or more AC. Mm. You know, that's the only time I'm concerned, okay, do I want to K-Rock this or do I want to, any, you know, <laughs> Kiss FM it. Uh -huh. I only swing the dial like, hey, this is going to get on top 40, this is going to get down and dirty. That's the only, but the song, tell, yeah. you know, the song makes it happen anyway. I got no choice. If, I mean, of all the people on earth, you do both better than anybody. I, I, I'm envious. Are you, ready right. for, are you ready for batter's box? Loosen up your arm there, buddy. It's time for uh, batter's box. Okay. Your, your elbow, you, 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 got a, you got a hitter here. Okay. Um, guys, um, Chris has agreed to do something a little, little unorthodox for us today, so thank him for this. Um, I'm going to name a sound, and you're going to give me the ratio of the, com uh, your favorite ratio on a compressor. Can I throw in attack too? All right. Okay, attack, yeah. and, attack and ratio, lead vocals. Quick um, four to one. Okay, fast attack. Snare. Slow two to one. <laughs> this is fun. <laughs> guitars, like Green Day sounding guitars. Uh, fast attack three to one, low threshold. Are you sure? I think you did three and a half to one. All right. Oh, okay. <laughs> Room mics. Um, heavy compression, slow attack. I love this. Bass guitar. Heavy compression, medium attack, four to one. Okay. Stereo bus again. The least I can get away with, 1.5. <laughs> that's all I got. Wow, that's a pretty good batter's box. <laughs> that's wow. our best batter's box. Yeah, absolutely, no oh, question. Man. They kind of went uh, out of the park gear sort questions. of regularly. They, they, they flew out of the park. That was great. Thanks, Chris. Funny for the gear question, yeah. Threw them right down but the that, you know, you, know, you never know. Like the, the funny thing about that question is about those questions is that then today's thing will work out. It'll be all opposite. Like I can't do any of that to it. You know? I right. know, right? I know. So funny. But you know what? That brings up a point. Your your plug-in line, you defies that sentence because you, because like I use the guitar one and the vocal one a lot, and I'm shocked about how about how many times it actually works. That's that's just that's just not supposed to be that way. It should only work one out of five, one out of four, and every time, Herb. It, I, and I don't want to use them because I don't want my clients to see them because they think I'm cheating. And every time, I'm well, let me try it. Just, you know, I'm struggling a little. Let me try it. And I'm like, son Boom. of a bitch, it, it sounds better than everything I've done so far. Exactly. It's, it, it, it's, how did you choose those frequencies on, on, on the vocal one? Because they always just work. Right. You're talking about the, w, the six faders, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, the, when they said, Chris, to v design a plug-in just from scratch mm -hmm. on what you wanted, I was like, this is perfect because in order to conquer these, you know, I'm trying to think of like a 12-year-old kid with his first rig. Mm. And what would he want as a plug-in? Oh, thanks, Chris. That's, 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 okay. Thanks uh, for calling I'm me a 12-year-old kid. Year old guy. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to think of the first-timers. I'm thinking yeah. about if all you have is this one plug-in, right? Can I do everything with it? I just wanted a simple all-in-one because to make that stuff happen in Pro Tools, it's lots of returns and sends and a pain in the ass. Mm -hmm. So, well, I, if you don't have a staff, it's a pain in the ass in the analog world too. Yeah, <laughs> you got peoples to do that for you. I, I always think of it as like a stereo. I just want to pick stuff that when you crank trouble on a stereo in a car or mid-range, uh -huh. that it's stuff that's just not going to be annoying. It's going to work mm -hmm. and real broad and simple. Mm -hmm. I want it to be real Swiss Army knife style. What's the ratio on that compressor? It's just perfect. I mean, it, I think it goes from like two to four to like limiting. You know, I just made it so, you know, oh, low, so medium, like high. Yeah. Let, me, let me grab and introduce our friend G.I. over in the corner office. It's Kudos full of questions. G.I., you got some stuff over there for uh, our guest? <laughs> yes, I do. What the hell was that? <laughs> First I one is from have a signature says, move. blowing up NS10s <laughs> is sacrilege. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know it is. <laughs> First one is from uh, Carlos Ote. Hey Chris, do you compress real snare and sample together, or as a whole, uh, as a whole, or each on their own separately? Ooh, I got a good audience. That's a good question. That's a good question. 
Um, you know, if you're if you're going to use samples and the samples are the same exact dynamic as the snare drum, which I do, I keep everything at perfectly the same dynamic. Mm -hmm. Then you have to treat them all the same because if you want to stay together and you don't want the sample to poke out and start sounding fake, you got to make sure that you keep them the same. So generally, I'll try to. I'll actually probably compress the dry snare drum and maybe not the samples. So, because usually that's more dynamic. When you so. trigger the sample, are you triggering it from the compressed part of the snare sound or from the original part just of the original, snare? Just yeah. originally, yeah. No, it's all just waveform replacement. Yeah, so, okay. it's all helpers because I don't want to hear samples. So. Yeah, good you question. Know, you just add. GI? Next question is from Panos Stam Stamatio. The cellos on the Apocalyptica album sounded like electric guitars, plus there was a lot of bass. The album sounded very heavy. What were some of the tricks uh, used to make the cello sound so aggressive and complement the drums? That, you know, that's a funny question that someone would even notice that because that Apocalyptica band is all cellos. And it's, uh, it's like, it sounds like guitars, of course. They treat it like they, they use Marshalls. You know, the, the, they, they, run the, they run the cellos and everything through marshals and, and boxes and stuff. So um, it's literally, instead of a Les Paul, it's a cello. Mm -hmm. And they plug through the same routing. So, I mean, I treated them like guitars. At first, I didn't know they were cellos. <laughs> I was going to Howard. I'm like, dude, what's with what this Apocalyptica band? What's this whole string thing? Where's the strings? I'm like, dude, it's all, all strings. strings. I'm like, huh? <laughs> like, that's pretty kick-ass. So... Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't anything normal. I, I spotted it after a while, like, oh, okay, I'm kind of cracking the code on this a bit, that it's um, you, strings, but they're you, out of control with what they do with yeah, strings. Your, your creativity on that was, you, you and Howard, that's, that's an out incredible there. record. Yeah, it was it was very tricky. It, it, it didn't crunch together easily. Mm. <laughs> no. Next one up, Michael McDonald says, hey, Chris. Doobie Brothers? Where do you think the future generation of successful mix engineers will come from? Will they come from the traditional studio assistant background like you did, or are there other ways to become the next CLA? Ah, boy, that's a good question. Um, look, I don't think that the T-Boy thing is going to keep going, you know. There's, the T-Boy thing's probably over, but it's going to come out of schools, and it's going to come by using the internet to find the information you want, but... The number one way, the number one guy that's going to be the next CLA, the next Clear Mount, the next Dave Pensado, is going to be the kids that have determination on making good sounding music, mm -hmm. period. And the tools aren't going to matter. Mm -hmm. I can't say, hey, as long as you get an SSLG Plus or a J or a K or, you know, an 88R or a thing, whatever. If you can make the mouse work or the pads or the faders, great. But it's all... Oh, oh, oh. I got a question. Yeah. Um, in, in keeping that train of thought going, you, you said you said that, that that you wanted to start getting involved earlier in the process as, as as opposed to just giving the mix and start there. Is that something you see as part of the future? For for to answer his question. Oh, to to get earlier involved in the process of making the record before the mix. Yeah. Well, then you're the producer. Um, I mean, if you become a superstar mixer, or in, you, you can go to the tracking date, and you can say, hey, when you cut the drums, do it like this mm -hmm. or that. I mean, that's what I'm thinking, right? Uh -huh. um, but the only time I'd want to get involved is if I'm producing it. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. the, Which, mix, uh, the mixer's secret weapon is the unfamiliarity with what's coming your way. Oh, that's true. I never thought of it that way. Mm -hmm. By the way, you did you produced something that I remember from the past that was pretty good. What was that? It wasn't chic. It was... Uh, no, wait, don't tell me, don't tell me. Oh, what was it? Well, I mean, I've done a bunch. It, it, it wasn't Chic for sure. That's no. Bob. I mean, it was Tina Turner or Joe Cocker or Cher, or, you know, a bunch of things back then. I remember the Joe Cocker one. That's or the Rick one Price. I or, I mean, you know, there's mm -hmm. a few things back then. But. Next one is from Michael Marucci. Do you feel that the workflow that you've developed over the years ever leaves you feeling stagnant as a mix engineer, or does it aid in your creativity? Do you believe that building a sonic brand is essential for uh, a developing engineer? I think Kellogg solved it all with the variety pack. <laughs> you know what? If you got a big box of cornflakes, you're going to eat that whole box. If you got some variety, it's nice. Okay, if you mix a heavy rock album and then have another one after, another one after it, okay, you get really good at it. But... I, I mean, just geez, just two days ago, I mean, I'm doing Tim McGraw for breakfast, and I'm doing heavy, screeching, bone-ripping Hollywood Undead right after it. Mm. And they couldn't have been even, they couldn't have been farther from being related. 
You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It might as well be Slipknot into Sugarland. I mean, I did that one day. Right. I actually like when, okay, what's next in the palette? Well, do you want something closer to what you're doing? Like, no, I want something opposite. Mm -hmm. I want to change gears completely. Mm -hmm. I want to go from a pickup truck to a freaking drag racer, okay? Mm. Let's do it. Mm. So yeah, variety is the spice of life, truly. Gotcha. And uh, this next one is from Anthony Duran. What are some of the, what are some of the techniques that you use in rock-specific production uh, and or mixing that you think could translate well to other uh, genres? I produce and mix a lot of bands that's like rock, uh, rap rock and electronic all mixed in one. I mean, I think your answer is pretty simple. It's about in-your-face vocal and in-your-face drums just hitting hard and, and being edgy. I mean, that's the thing that's going to drive it. Plus, by doing this all at low level, you're going to get that result, you know. Mm. It's, it's, it's a little bit of a hard question, but I mean, you know. Yeah, yeah, I was trying to think of an answer myself. It is kind of a tough one. It's not one. really, you know. <laughs> it's a great, a great yeah. question. When, 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 what's your go-to Technique for hitting hard. When you say I have to make it hit hard, the first thing that comes to mind compression. Turn the volume down. So monitoring allows you to create something that hits hard. Right. If 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 you monitor, the lower you monitor, you can't hear it. So if for in order to be exciting, you got to push your fingers a little bit more. When you're when you're listening to it loud, you make a move like this, and it's like, oh, that's okay. Push it to it quiet. You got to go like this. Yeah. You got to push stuff harder because it's got to jump out at a lower volume. When I think about hitting harder. I, I, I pump a little 1K into a compressor. Is, is, that, is that something you... Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't sit there and go, okay, here's my pump a little harder uh -huh. rule book. You uh -huh. know? I, I don't have like a, a little card with plastic laminate around it that helps me with that. Um, it's just see where I can, you know, see where I can bend it. You know? See where gotcha. I can bend, bend the edges as much as I possibly can. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, this next one is from Colt Caparoon. Chris, what was the defining point in your career that allowed you to make the jump to only mixing? And any words of wisdom for a studio owner trying to make it in this highly competitive age where so many people want to mix their own music? Um, I mean, I could put it simply is it took one producer to say, I'm using that on a record to start it. Okay, well, that demo was like from the 70s, but it also takes your first major hit, like, it may be living in America was some, somewhat global for James Brown in mm -hmm. 85. So, mm -hmm. and doing that with Dan Hartman gave me the power to, to grab other stuff. It, 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 it gave me that ego or gave me that, you know, that, that thing, that, that name, that recognition, re, you know, the recognition to now go after other stuff. Mm -hmm. So that was definitely a door opener. I mean, and that was that was just before back in the high life. So those two things kind of kind of buttoned together, where it was record making and mixing, and then you know doing twelve inches. So I mean, that was it for me. But all it takes is you getting some band to use your mix on the record. That's right. Period. Be before That's before you have that record, people come to you and ask you to mix it and make it sound like flavor of the month. Yeah, After sure. you have that hit, they come to you for your sound. That's Absolutely. the big difference. Absolutely. Absolutely. And free is an important word, especially these days. Yeah. If you have a rig, everyone's got a rig. Everyone can probably mix something on their laptop. You know what? They don't have to see where it's coming from. That's right. Because sometimes that won't work in your best interest. True. But if they compare it to the other guy's thing, and you're like, hey, that, whose is that? Exactly. What's his name? Find his number. We want to use that. And it's hey. age old. It will always be that way. Beat him. <laughs> so I, I believe in the, since CDs are still available, Put down five CDs of five mixes. Let the artist pick it. Blind taste. Put me in there. Go ahead. I'm not afraid. Mm -hmm. All right? You guys want to use your L1s and L2s and L3s to make the CD loud? I don't care. I'm not doing that. Mm -hmm. I want my mix. You put all the levels the same. Fine. But, um, you know, that's the big balls right there. You want to play? Let's play. Mm -hmm. Put it on the table. <laughs> you want to be against Bob or Costi or you want all of us to be on the line for the same song? Why not? I mean, really. Yeah. That's uh, what you know. That's what the world in, is a bit. In a, uh, in, a, in a small way, that's what we do. Every mix, we're competing against all those guys. Every yeah. mix. So you got to think about the next guy coming up to bat. It's going to make your batting average shit. So you mm -hmm. better hit. Mm -hmm. You better connect it. Absolutely. Next oh, one is from. I love that. I love that. <laughs> next right. one is from Jesse Miller. Please explain your take on LCR. What, if anything, in your mixes are placed in the stereo field that are not in the LCR position? Um, what's ever going to poke out and look really odd, you know, like whatever's going to look like a wart or a, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, 
or, or hair I'm, or something. I made a career on warts. Don't yeah, not warts. Yeah, I mean, you know, for me, the stuff that you paint on the inside is you'll do it for a guitar to not be so blatantly left in a verse or something, or a shaker that's not so blatantly right because it's so dry and has no space around. Usually it's stuff that's anechoic, which means has no space or relationship around it. So you got to pan it in betweeners. It's usually shakers and percussion. It's usually that stuff that, all right, I can't just throw it up the middle. I can't hard pan it. Let's, let's go somewhere in between, mm -hmm. you know. That's it. Or sometimes it's a vocal double or something, you know, vocal double, triple that, you know, it's, they don't want it that tight. So, but really, I'm an LCR guy. Do you ever, do you ever mess with much uh, MS stuff while you're mixing? No. Like that whole, I use a little bit of super wide panning because mm. the SSL um, stereo modules have a, an, um, an yeah. extra wide button. Yeah. I'll do that, you know, and I love the Q sound effect that I can get on some, you know, mm. some plugins. Um, I like that, the kind of out of phasey to the side things I like, but, but um, that's about it. You, you thing. Do I that? just didn't understand what that old meant. Yeah, we got a little too wide there for a while. But do you ever do that with effects returns or just? I do it with effects returns sometimes. Okay. So they'll make you get nauseous. <laughs> do you still adhere to the fact that the you know I sort of believe the studio is still a temple? Like when you come in there, it's a place to be revered and it's a place to inspire and so so forth. Yeah, that's do, a good question. Do, yeah, you're right. Do you feel that way? Yeah, I make my studio a temple. It's like a rock and roll museum. It's the Hall of Fame. It's everything. Yeah. Yeah. I want the band to walk in and lose sense of time and just want to stay there till we're done. Absolutely. It shouldn't be clinical at all. Yeah. Yeah. It's dark. It's got lasers. It's got candles. It's you don't know what time it is. Mm -hmm. and whatever you want is one wave away. Mm -hmm. You want food. You want drinks. You want whatever. I want you to feel like you have left reality. Yeah, absolutely. It's a, it's Quincy a, said uh, in the studio, studio, help me, you probably know the quote better, yeah, that yeah, you, actually, you always have to leave room for God to walk in. Yeah, he said that. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Always got to leave room for magic. You know, when I've had Stevie Nicks in there and the lights are so low, that to use a flashlight to find the console. Mm -hmm. There's always magic when she's there. Mm -hmm. Always. Mm -hmm. Something magical happens when she walks in the room every time. Mm -hmm. Period. And I always look forward to any time I'm with her in my room. Do you ever try one of those miners helmets with a little I light while one. you're mixing? <laughs> you know what? I have I have a mix LA hat. I usually wear a hat. I have my hats that have the little lights that up. Have the on lights the on from my assistants to go in the patch bay. I got those too. Uh, we got time for another question here? Uh, yeah. Go ahead, you. Um, getting a lot of this one in the chat room. Um, a lot of people want to know some of your references or if you could suggest some references uh, for up and coming mixers. What do you mean by references, like stuff to listen to mix-wise? Yeah, like, like references. Inspirational things, I think, is more what mm -hmm. they're asking. It's real easy. Bob Clear Mountain or Back in Black. Get a copy of Back in Black. <laughs> use it as your ref. Um, Who makes that? Did Shipley mix that? No, Tony Platt. Tony Platt, right. Sold $49 million. I have a picture of me with the Masters. It's very exciting. Mm, Big moment. That's, that could be the greatest rock well, mix of all time. Yeah, I mean, you, just find just find a record. It's completely the template. Use that. Mm -hmm. American Idiot. I didn't say it. Uh, American uh, Idiot. Let me ask. It, it should be things that inspire you, like 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 Chris talked about yeah. doing country one minute and, and 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 heavy metal the next. It's like food. Sometimes you have to have something that clears your palate. And what I do is I, I go to things that inspire me, and and I listen to those for about thirty minutes, and then. When I can't stand it anymore and I got to work, then I work. And, and, and also step outside of where you're comfortable. You know, learn from other places. That, you know, I'm, I'm always encouraging. Mm -hmm. you know, when we all came up, you know, you're, you're, the diversity of your mixes and artists you work with is astounding. And, but that's got to keep your edge and keep you competitive and so and so forth. And I'm always, when, we, when, you know, when young guys come up to us or young girls and they want to, it's about not staying safe in the place. You're going to learn from other things. Don't, don't, don't get so arrogant about what you like and go, yeah, that alternative thing over there might be, or this indie rock thing might be something, or this country thing. G gather all that because you're going to learn a trick or a technique yeah. that's going to make you stand out from others. Yeah, the thing about the way Chris works is that it lends itself to being good at anything because Precisely. he's not working with, with, with sounds and EQs, he's working with feelings, emotions, vibe. So that translates to bagpipe music, out of control cellos, country records. Absolutely, exactly. And that, that gives him a huge advantage. The best folks in this chair, God knows we certainly have one here, have always said, 
got to keep your gut involved. It's about instincts, about character. It's not all about technical mm -hmm. stuff. It's a, yeah. The beauty of Chris is, I'm sorry, Chris. The, the, I'm bragging on you, so it's okay. Um, <laughs> not only does he do that, but he trusts his first instinct at that. Mm -hmm. And I think that's so vital that, that I'm, I'm, I'm going to start doing that from now. And you're going to start getting four-hour mixes from me here. Well, it yeah. works for me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that's, you know, you got to trust yourself. Yeah. yeah. You know, I think my whole life is the same way. I just use the same enthusiasm in everything I do. And, uh, you know, I've learned it's more important. Do you keep I'm the, learning. Do you keep the business aspect? I mean, obviously, in the position you're in, you're employing people, you have facilities to run, you have big responsibilities. Do you I, keep that separate and let other people deal with that? I want to be on the, the joyride that is music and life. And go. I want to have people I have trust. And I have people in my life. Um, my business manager, Tina Fassbender, I've had her for like 28 years, mm -hmm. and I 100% trust her mm -hmm. to be on my side. I just want to have team players, and Aaliyah, who's my manager, mm -hmm. I want to have team players on my side that take care keep, of it, let me follow the dream, way. because the dream is all about about the music and that. I don't want right. to be talking business with anybody exactly. ever. Exactly. I want exactly. to talk about the business of music. Yeah. yeah. I love that quote, and so I, when I heard him just say that last quote, I, I remembered I wrote a quote down, Move the band, not the vocal, when you're mixing. I thought that was, I love that one. Yeah. Non sequitur there, but I had to, I just thought that was kind of cool, Chris. Time flies. Yeah. Went really quick. Oh, man. No, no. So yeah, nice to here. be here with you guys. Thanks, Chris. That was oh, awesome. I ain't leaving. See, the, 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 the really cool part. Send out the address. We're all going to keep yeah, this thing let, going. Let, let me say this before we, one of the cool parts about, we've been blessed with lots of guests. One of the things Chris did is he never, didn't keep working with Will to figure out when he could come, and we appreciate that. We don't always get that from yeah, guys thanks, that level. That's the, we really appreciate. Oh, that. I felt so bad I couldn't do the first round. I knew that. We I did this. We was felt good no for you because that meant you were busy. I mean, yeah, you know, it was a really this is this is, you know what? It's never a good time, but you have to make time. You do, you do. Okay. Now, can we lean on you and and, and heavy foot you about at some point in time coming back? Because we've always scratched yeah, we'll, the surface. We, yeah, we'll come back or for we'll round come two. Back to the studio, or we'll do something. We can, we can do some fun stuff. Yeah. Whatever you want. Love to. Fabulous. I look forward to it. Yeah, I, I had about two hundred more compressor questions. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll get to my compressor questions uh, next time. <laughs> well, next time there'll be no compressor questions. <laughs> None <laughs> whatsoever. All the other way. Absolutely. I did a whole Sardine interview and didn't ask him what Mikey did on Thriller. I was proud wow, of that. Wow, I was good. proud That's of that. That's hardcore. Yeah. Say good night, my friend. Hey guys, uh, I want to share a couple of things with you. First of all, um, Chris Lord Algie is someone that uh, that sometimes I don't like the man because sometimes we're on the same record and he cleans my clock. <laughs> sometimes I talk to him and he's my favorite friend in the world. But I tell you what, you can learn things about life. You can learn things about engineering. You can learn things about this wonderful thing that we do for a living from him. Uh, I study his records constantly. I never, ever, ever and complacent when I know I'm going to be on a record with Chris. I, 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 I try my best when I'm going to be on his records. And um, I really thank him and appreciate him for coming out. Run this, run this back a few times because there's a lot of little nuanced things that he said in that New York speed that uh, I don't have that, that you might need to run back and catch because there's a lot of little subtle things that I'm going to go practice today on the mix that I'm working on. Now, a little quick piece of information. A good buddy of mine's having some problems. And uh, keep him in your prayers. He's a good friend of all, all of ours, and, and we all know him. So, Eddie, get well, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>